my ideas usually came rather suddenly. Usually is unexpected. YC Fung is hereby honored as the 2007 recipient of the Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize. Dr. Fung is an outstanding biomedical engineer. Dr. Fung has made this sea change in the way we look at biomechanics. Dr. Fung has really profoundly affected the direction that my life has taken and my career has taken. Dr. Fung has inspired us. It's hard to understate the importance of Dr. Fung. He's just sort of a legend. He really, truly is the father of biomechanics. I feel proud and I feel happy that somebody was kind enough to nominate me. What Dr. Fung has done is to provide intellectual foundation upon which you can build many devices. Dr. Fung's work has, has led to the invention of, of what most people consider to be artificial skin, uh, particularly as applied to, to burn victims. Materials which allows for reconstruction of joints. Personal body armor for people in the military and emergency personnel. Protective devices in cars such as seat belts, airbags. The overall net effect has been truly profound. Press prizes to be given to that person who has had the greatest impact on the human condition. The significance of the Russ Prize to the field of engineering really is twofold. First, it provides that Nobel-like uh, prestige to engineering because of its magnitude. It has encouraged the engineers to work more on problems that can help the human society, uh, primarily through biomedical applications. The Russ Prize has been fabulous in terms of carrying the message that engineering is about solving human problems and affecting human lives. I was born in China, 1919. Wait a minute, 1930s. Anyway, I entered college the year China and Japan had a war. Japanese plane was flying above, so I want to study aeronautics. I want to make airplanes. <laughs> My special field in aeronautics is called aeroelasticity. It's the stability of airplane flying through heavy storms and bad weather and landing in uneven lands and so on. He wrote a book on aeroelasticity that's still used by many aeronautic engineering departments. Working in that field, you, you cannot help feel you know the airplane pretty well. You know it's flying pretty well, but you don't know pilots. You don't know the people. So the inclination of knowing, wanting to know more about people has always been my desire. So I started in UCSD to work on bioengineering, but there's no bioengineering department. He founded the program here in UCSD. Uh, it's not by accident that he knows all about biomedical sciences. He made a great effort to learn these things and to be uh, in direct contact with the physicians uh, and biological scientists. I feel the first thing you have to describe the problem. We do work primarily for the government and it's in a variety of engineering areas, but mostly in biomechanics, biomedical applications. I first met Dr. Fung as part of a Army medical research panel that was convened to look into this problem of high intensity noise and whether it had an injurious effect on soldiers. Dr. Fung had been working with his colleagues up at UCLA on measuring the properties of lungs. How is the lung injured? That's an interesting question. So a lot's known about the lung in, under physiological conditions breathing in and out, but not when it's stressed very rapidly, the way a blast wave stresses it. Lung is a soft organ, so, so tough, actually, in, in, really so delicate, yet so tough, in other words, not easily endured. So he determined those properties and um, did some uh, work on the actual injury mechanisms of how the lung might get injured if it got stressed so so rapidly. And if you enjoy the how is it is that to heal itself? This picture is a picture of our lung, actually. If you don't have a picture like this, I have no real feeling about how blood circulation in the lung 
uh, how from the art, heart into the pulmonary arteries and art, pulmonary vein into drain back to the heart. But having a picture like this, then I can know each area, its function. And being an engineer, you can put this in certain mathematics, certain way of describing it. This is my drawing. And uh, each picture is something about this size. Uh, so many, 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 many photographs finally put together into this. In other words, a learn is lots of work. <laughs> Take lots of pictures, identify everything, and then put together into a picture like that. Today, that work has led to the military standard with now a model of the body's response to blast and what the consequences are. All right, Buffo, come here. <laughs> so come in, come in. Yeah, I'll show you some pictures. Good, good. My current research is work, working on high blood pressure. What amazes me is, uh, you know, our life is a double helix of DNA. Everybody knows that. But, but it's extremely interesting to know how come a little bit change of blood pressure, such a gentle thing, can induce the DNA to do such very, very specific things of remodeling blood vessels. That's where things are interesting, and that's where things are, I think, automatically important. I first met Dr. Fung when I was attending school at UCSD. I had actually just embarked on a second career. I had gone back to school thinking that I would go to medical school and become a doctor. One of the doctors at the hospital I worked at said, no, 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 go into biomedical engineering. Biomechanical engineering is the wave of the future. Engineering can help medicine. I took this first course in continuum mechanics and the first few weeks I thought, Oh, what a mistake I've made. To make matters worse, I had the professor that wrote the book for you know, my class, and that was extremely intimidating. To work with students is always my desire. One of the first homework assignments we had was to determine the stresses and loads on pin-jointed trusses, and I had no clue as to what I was doing or how to even approach it. And I kept thinking, you know, I should go and ask the teacher, but, you know, I just felt so intimidated. When I was a student, I never had really feel I'm a teacher, he's a student, or she's a student. But I approached him after class, and he um, said, you know, if you have time, let's sit down right now. And I, I was pretty amazed because being, you know, such a prestigious person in the department and so busy with research, he took probably two hours to work with me on the, the whole area and theory of, of trusses and how to figure out the homework problems. Working together is greater pressure. It was a pivotal moment in my career because it was sort of a catalyst to deciding, okay, I think I can do this. I understand it. Um, I understand what engineering is about. I understand how it relates to the body. And that's teacher's reward. Numerex is devoted to developing minimally invasive medical devices to treat primarily lung cancer and COPD or emphysema. What we're trying to do is simulate the worst case scenario, trying to get with the higher lobes, which is you know farther up. up into the One of the things that I think is marvelous and interesting about bioengineering and biomedical engineering is you need a thorough understanding of materials as well as the mechanics of things as well as design and all of those things are based in the principles that I learned when I was in school and very much so on the teachings of Dr. Fung and particularly the series of books that he developed in the biomechanical area. The reason I'm writing books is that that's a, in order to explain something, you cannot really say in a few words. You need to put all the background down. By the time you put all the background down, it's a book. We had a problem here at Numerex in regards to one of the devices we're developing to treat COPD. My vice president of research and development came to me with a set of uh, Dr. Fung's books and said, I just found you know, the answer to the problem in these books. These are great. I'm going to buy these books for all of the engineers in the department. And uh, I started laughing and said, the guy who wrote those was my teacher at school. So he's a celebrity <laughs> at Numerex. Dr. Fung clearly had that visionary thinking. The books that he wrote and the research that he did was, um, you know, way before its time. The foundation of knowledge 
that underlies many, many of the new inventions. This research is the Virtual Haptic Back Project, and this is unique to Ohio University. It's a joint project between the Russ College of Engineering and Technology and Ohio University's College of Osteopathic Medicine. We are trying to better train osteopathic medical students in their sense of palpatory diagnosis, which means to find medical problems via touch. So what we have here is a virtual model, accurate virtual model of the human back. When I touch it, I can feel that via this haptic interface. So as the student presses harder, they'll feel more force back. And this involves soft tissue biomechanics. And Professor Fung is the pioneer in that area. I'm a physicist. And one of the ways that I feel I can contribute is to apply force to biological systems. And so there are several areas in which we work on that. One involves looking at the forces on white blood cells in capillaries, the smallest blood vessels. And that's work that I've done in collaboration with Dr. Goetz. We try to understand how leukocytes get trapped in the lungs when you have something, for example, like a systemic infection. And this could lead to organ failure and death. Now to understand this problem, we need to understand the mechanical properties of the leukocyte, the architecture of the lung, and then how blood flows through the lungs. You can gain insight to those three aspects of the problem by going back to YC Fung's pioneering work that he did in each of these areas. I like the warm hot pot. <laughs> Let me just first start with uh, 1962. That's when he was giving the lecture in Atlantic City. I went there with my wife and our two girls, and uh, we were at a restaurant. The four of us were eating, and Dr. Fung was with a group of uh, scientists. They were at uh, they were the council of the microcirculatory society. I came. Um over from Hong Kong to UCSD in 1968 and majoring in bioengineering. And when Dr. Fong realized I was a foreign student, he was gracious enough to offer me a uh, job in the lab. I was just a neophyte, uh, a young assistant professor, and with my family sitting at another table. Dr. Fong saw me and uh, he came over, he left at the other table and sat with us for the dinner. So one day, uh, he asked me to solve a pretty complicated equation. So I worked hard, spent a lot of time, and went to the computer center and printed out the results. I was very embarrassed. I told Dr. Fong, you shouldn't leave your council, you know, group uh, where you had the dinner. No, he said, I, I enjoy had to be with uh, your family and children. And uh, it was just uh, totally uh, unbelievable. Dr. Fong took a quick glance at, at those uh, pages and looked at me and said, Peter, I think the answer is wrong. Okay. Now, to me, it's a brilliant man talking to me. I felt very, very uh, honored and happy, but I, at the same time very embarrassed that, that he would uh, spend the time with us and uh, cannot be with the rest of the uh, group. From that day on, I was really impressed with Dr. Fong. Oh, people are gen generous. Uh, I can only be grateful. I read stories about Fritz and Dolores Russ, and I think they did a fantastic contribution. The Russes have meant a great deal to the Russ College and Ohio University. They've endowed named professorships for our outstanding faculty. They have funded prizes so that we can recognize our faculty. They've provided scholarships. They have probably, best of all, provided advice to the leadership of the college for as long as the college has really been in existence as a separate entity. They were so accomplished and so bright. Fritz's uh, passion for engineering is best exemplified by the Russ Prize. Russ Prize is a unique his passion, I think, was to inspire more people to be interested in and to recognize engineers. And by having the Ross Prize, uh, I think the, the extending their influence. That's sort of the Fritz thing, is that prizes aren't intended to have an immediate effect. They're intended to have a long-term effect. So Fritz, when he did it, was probably thinking that 50 years from now, you'd start to see the effect. Benefiting by engineering research. 
and that the people who were inspired by the prize would really get the prize 30, 40, 50 years down the road. I'm personally extremely grateful and I honor them very, very much. Thank you.